Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I will show you how to calculate the vibrational modes for a water molecule in quantum espresso. And um, as you know, there are three atoms in a water molecule, so you have three multiplied by three equals nine total degree of freedom, but you need to subtract the three uh, translational degree of freedom and three rotational degree of freedom, and then you will be left with three uh, vibrational modes. However, we will still get 3 multiplied by 3 equals 9 modes from the calculation because the software only knows the total degree of freedom rather than subtracting anything. Okay, so the three vibrational modes are this uh, listed here, symmetric stretch, asymmetric stretch, and uh, symmetric bend. And uh, we know that the stretching modes have higher energy than the bending mode, so um, they are uh, 3,700 and 3,600 inverse centimeter, and the bending mode has 1,600 inverse centimeter. And inverse centimeter is actually the unit that is usually used in spectroscopy. But of course, you can do a unit conversion given by the formula here to terahertz here. And then you can also inverse that to get the actual period of these vibrational modes in the real time in femtoseconds. OK, so those are the values that are listed in the literature. And in this video, I will show you how to calculate that using quantum espresso and compare the output with the literature. OK. So the first thing to do is to relax the structure totally. That's what we have done before. You should be quite familiar with the structure of the input uh, here because it is a simple relaxation calculation. And then the second step is to calculate the um, vibration or the phonons. So this is something similar as the phonon calculation of silicon. Yeah? And you need to take care that the output directory is the same as in the, um, in the previous calculation so that it can find the final wave function from the previous calculation. And you also need to specify the um, atomic mass of hydrogen and uh, oxygen. And this is the output file for the dynamic matrix. And this is to let it calculate phonon, but this is by default. Yeah, OK. So uh, let's just run the calculation. We can open a terminal. One thing that I changed is that I actually added the um, environmental variable to the um, .bash rc uh, file so that every time we open a terminal, it tells the terminal where we uh, installed the quantum espresso. So we don't have to um, uh, input the full path. Uh, I can quickly show you what I did. Bash rc. So I added this line here. Basically, it tells the terminal that the quantum espresso is located here. Yeah. OK, and then we can go to the calculation directory, calculation, and it is 17. And then we can just say MPI run minus MP2 with two cores, PW.x. And now I don't need to input the full path. If you haven't um, exported environmental variable, you need to actually write the full path to the PW.x. Yeah? You can try that out. So H2O, we first do the relaxation calculation, and we put the output to the output file. And we use this AND sign here to make it happen in the background. So you see that the standard output is here, and all of the output files are in the out directory here. OK. And you see that um, this is done. And then we can run the vibrational calculation, MPI run minus MP2. But this time we need to use phonon.x. And as usual, we let the standard input and standard output to out. Then I'll also let it happen in the background. We can check by use tail minus F out to see what is the output in the real time. And then we just wait a little bit. OK, the drop is down. And we can just go to the output file here and scroll down. There are those nine modes as predicted, three multiplied by three equals nine, total degree of freedom. And then you will find some interesting thing here. There are negative frequencies and also something that is close to zero. 
Those are usually because it counts the um, translational degree of freedom and also the rotational degree of freedom, which does not have any real vibration because the, the water molecule is actually free in those degree of freedoms. That's why you get a negative or a close to zero frequency. Um, and what you need to take care of is here, yeah, 7, 8, and 9. So we copy this one to here and copy this one to here and copy this one to here. Yeah? And you see that it's actually very close to literature and experiment and the deviation is only uh, around 10%. Okay. So in this video, I've shown you how to calculate the vibrational modes of water molecule, those three vibrational modes, and they are quite consistent with the literature. In the next video, I will show you how to calculate the molecular dynamics using PW.X. And there you can also see that the water molecule vibrates in real time, actually, with a period of around 10 femtoseconds. Okay, if you learned something from my video, I appreciate your like or subscribe to my channel and I hope to see you next time.